bad habits. Question, who here has bad habits? <laughs> we all have bad habits, is that true? Yes. We all have bad habits. Question, do you know you have bad habits? Yes. Not only do we have them, we know we have them. We know there are things we shouldn't be doing. We know we shouldn't be snacking late at night. We know we shouldn't just like yell at our husband at the first drop or be impatient with our kids or, ugh, or get stressed out with our coworkers, right? We know we have bad habits. We know we sleep in too late. We know we stay up too late. We know we haven't been to church in a while. We know that we should really call our mom or go visit our dad. These bad habits, right? We should read more. Watch less television, is that true? true? Let's take it to weight loss. We know we shouldn't be snacking. We know we really should stay away from those sweets and carbs. We know, oh, I got one for you New Mexicans. We know tortillas of bread. <laughs> <laughs> and we know we shouldn't eat it. And we know if we eat it, it might expand and might hurt the baby, is that true? Yes. So why do you do it? <laughs> Why won't you stop? Y'all wanna know why you won't stop? Can a skinny ass Asian teach you why you won't stop your bad habits? Okay, number one. First question you have to ask yourself. Why did you have weight loss surgery? Why did you go through all this? insurance evaluation, dietary visits, psyche eval, lab work, EGD. Why did you go through all this stuff? Improve your health, yes, get healthy. Improve your health, get healthy. Close. You guys wanna know the real answer? You want your life to change. You want the change. With the weight loss, you're hoping that your life will change. You'll have more energy, you'll be healthier, you can play with your grandbabies, you can go for the job, you'll have more self-confidence, you can ask the boy out, etc. Does anyone in this room, anyone watching, want to have weight loss surgery just to go back to their old lives? No, no. I can guarantee you the answer is no. no. Is that true? I don't care how much people hate me on the internet, but that's the truth. They can't argue with that. No one wants to have weight loss surgery to go back to the same old life. No. Insulin, CPAP machine, can't catch your breath, aching knees, aching hips, no self-confidence, everyone's taking advantage, all that stuff, right? But that happens right? again and again. So why don't we change? Now imagine this. Think about how crazy this is. You're driving your car. You guys remember Thelma and Louise? Yes. <laughs> and you're heading towards a cliff or a brick wall. And you know you're going to wreck. You know you're going to fall off the cliff. What would you do? Stop the brake. Turn the steering wheel. Yes? Would you sit there and go, oh my god, here comes the cliff. <laughs> this is not going to be good. <laughs> but I just can't change. I can't force myself. I can't seem to make myself turn the steering wheel. I sure hope someone comes along and makes me change the steering wheel. And then you go off the cliff and go, Wee, well, I guess I'm gonna die. Would you do that? No. no, you would never do that, right? Question, here's another scenario. Let's say your daughter is driving or your son or someone you really love is driving this car heading towards a cliff and you're a passenger. Would you go, oh well, I guess we're gonna die together. This would be awesome. <laughs> this is terrible. I, I really hope someone comes along and changes us or fixes this or, would you do that? No, what would you do? Grab the steering Grab wheel. Grab the steering wheel. Say, baby, we can't do this. This is bad. We gotta change directions. Makes sense. But why do we do that with our bad habits? Why do we sit there and say like, I'm, I'm a carbaholic, I'm a chocoholic. I can't control myself around sweets. Oh, if only I could get back on track. 
Oh, if only Dr. Wong would show me how to meditate. If only Dr. Wong would move in and cook for me. <laughs> right? And people will sit here, watch this video later, I promise you, and they're gonna say, oh, that guy, he's fat shaming people. He's fat shaming me because, you know, he doesn't know how hard I'm trying. And then I'll, I'll be like, fine. If that's your attitude, then I'm fucking fat shaming you. <laughs> because I think the problem is we've become too sensitive in this world. Mm -hmm. And if I don't tell you you're heading the wrong direction, then I'm not helping you. Is that true? Yes. Amen? Yes. I'll give it one more. If, if I don't tell you and your doctors don't tell you that you're yes. making the wrong choices for your health, then I'm complicit yes. in your bad health. Yes. I'm complicit in your diabetes yes. and your bad choices and your wrecked marriage and all this stuff. Is that true? Yes. yes. So we need to wake up about this, man. This is not fast shaming. This is calling it what it is, right? So here's the scenario. Imagine this. There's a young farmer and he's so excited. I'm starting my farm. He wakes up early in the morning one day, starts up his tractor, his young little tractor, and he's going to go plow the field. So he drives the tractor down the fields and he goes and he plows his field, yes? Next day, he wakes up early again, starts the tractor, plows the field again, yes? Does this every single day, month, a year. Eventually he does it so long, what will happen? The ground will form these grooves in the ground. They'll form ruts. So every morning he starts his tractor, 10 years, 20 years, he takes the same path through his fields. Eventually his ruts become so deep, now pay attention, his ruts become so deep that he can just let go of that steering wheel and that tractor will just follow those ruts. Ooh. Make sense? Okay. That's your bad habits, mm -hmm. right there. That is it. And that is your snacking habit, that's your sugar craving habit, that is the I have no self-esteem habit. Make sense? The billionaire Warren Buffett, you guys know who that is? Yeah. Yes. Often the uh, number one, number two, richest man in the world. He has this quote. This will change your life. He'll write this down. The chains, the chains of your bad habits chains of your bad habits are too weak to be felt until they cannot be broken until they are too strong to be broken It's all your little disciplines, all the little things you neglect, the things you don't do. The chains of your bad habits are too weak to be felt until they are too strong to be broken. What do you do when you get home? You take off your shoes, you plop on the couch, you on the t turn on the television. Before you know it, you've done that every single day for five years. It was too weak. What do you do on Friday nights? Turn on Netflix, snuggle up with your honey bear? pop some popcorn before you know it you're having popcorn every single night does that make sense what do you do when you get stressed out at work you have that stash of candy you do this when you walk by your co-workers desk and they have candy and you just reach see your snacking is not something you can't control it's just this habit it's this rut you're into this motion you're in the habit of having a certain amount of food on your plate. That's it. Your bad habits are just ruts in your field. And those chains that keep you tied down are too strong now to be broken. And I get into this fight and argument on the internet all the time. This is how people, this is the argument about addiction. And people say, I don't believe in addiction. I don't believe in addiction. And I have other people say, well, Dr. Vong, how can a healthcare professional, as, you know, as much as you studied and read, how can you not believe in addiction? We've got good studies that show addiction is real, et cetera, et cetera. We have studies that show, you know, you give chocolate to an obese person and their 
one part of their brain lights up like really bright, like they're on heroin. And I go, well, duh, they're obese. They love chocolate. Their ruts are so deep. Their ruts in their brain for chocolate so deep. It doesn't mean they're doomed. Does that make sense? Yeah. That for me is addiction. You've just become so used to this motion. Does that make sense? So then the argument says, well, you know, we have studies that show like the response to chocolate or to candy or to sweets is like, it's higher than morphine or higher than heroin. And I said, well, how does a heroin addict quit being a heroin addict? Anyone know? Stop using heroin, man. How does an alcoholic stop being an alcoholic? Stop Anyone know? Drinking. Stop drinking alcohol. But Dr. Vong, I'm a food addict. Well, how does a food addict quit being a food addict? Stop, stop eating. eating so much food. Well, you can't though, Mary Luce. You can't. You have to eat. That's the argument people tell me, right? People want to say, but Dr. Vong, it's not, it's not like that because we're food addicts and we have to eat three meals a day. The lady and then I say, snack. and then I say, listen, the reason you misunderstand is because your answer is wrong. Now pay attention. A heroin addict stops being a heroin addict, not because they stop using heroin. A heroin addict stops being a heroin addict because they make the choice to not use heroin. Is that true? Yes. yes. An alcoholic stops being an alcoholic because they make the choice to not drink that day. And every recovery program tells you that. They'll say, today I'm grateful for my sobriety. I, do not, I make the choice to not drink today. So a food addict, the obese people, have to also make the choice for good health, for good nutritious foods, to not snack, to not overeat. You guys are, it's the same thing. Everybody has to make that choice and it doesn't matter if it's heroin, gambling, or food. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So how do you do that? How do you break your bad habit? Anyone know? Nah, close. First thing you have to do is just decide. Decide I'm gonna make the change. You have to, you have to, listen now, you have to grab that steering wheel again. You can't just let it keep going along the ruts and be like, I don't know what to do. No, you grab the steering wheel and you change the course. You make the decision. Because a lot of people go, well, I know I should start eating healthier. I really need to come back to group. I just, I need to get back on track. See, that's not a decision. <coughs> Those people haven't decided. That's just more just talk. Mm -hmm. That's more, oh, I sure hope someone comes along and helps me out. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. At some point, the addict has to say, enough. This is it. I'm done. Not another day. No more. That's the decision moment. Does that make sense? Yes. That's how you break your bad habits. And that, only that. I've decided, I'm grabbing the steering wheel, I'm going a different direction. Cool? Yeah, yes. You have a good group today? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Awesome. Get your addicted butt out of here. Good. <laughs>